So uh, this is not a question, but when Stu made this movie, uh, when he uh, went to uh, Dohoku to volunteer, and uh, when he shot this movie, uh, his life was in a, you know, he was kind of in a hard situation. But he went to Dohoku and shot this movie. So uh, one more time, just give it up for Stu. Thank you very much, Stu. じゃあ、最後の本当に映画作りの演奏者の、いろいろ大変な時だったんですけれども、あの、どう吹いてこれだけのことを日本のためにやってくれました。本当にスチュー、ありがとうございます。Anybody, any other questions? Anyone up there? Up there? Or, do you want to try to yell? I think you only have one mic, so. Okay. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you gave us the opportunity to see this, and uh, I don't know how you feel because I we went out there. I think you were up front with those people, and Los Angeles is not immune to any of these disasters they faced. It. That's right. You felt, and I want to know what's the key for survival, for those people to recover and rebirth and rebuild, what's the key? Well, I, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, it really goes down to the essence, of, I think, of, of, of you know human existence. Is what makes us go on, what makes us survive. The reason why I made this film about these people, as opposed to focusing on something like Fukushima and a nuclear disaster, is because these people, to me, have what you're talking about. They have the vibrancy, they have the, the desire to not only survive for themselves, but for the people around them. So to me, I think it's about compassion. I think that's the key to survival. If you care about somebody, not just yourself, but if you love people around you, even if you've lost people that you love, if you find that light, you talk to talks about that at the end about the light, if you find that in your own life, even if it's as dark as it can get, then I think you can survive. So it's a little bit of an abstract answer maybe, but I think they have that spirit, that soul, and I think it's a big part of the Japanese existence, which I think the rest of the world, we can all learn from, we're all humans, we have the ability to have that type of a spirit, we just have to be aware of it and be conscious of it. So, Thank you. Sure. Yes, up there. How did you find the people that you interviewed and, and uh, filmed in the movie? How did I find the people that I interviewed? Um, Basically, when I first went and volunteered and met there, I met a couple people, Endo-san. There's a guy named Endo who's in the volunteer section. Um, he's the one actually has a rabbit. I, I, I keep a rabbit, I just saw that rabbit um, like last week. And it's adorable, it was really skinny in the summer, now it's fat and fluffy. Um, maybe it's symbolic. Give um, it up for Coco-san. Coco-san is the, the, the name of the rabbit. But Endo-san had, you know, he was sort of the he was the guy that said, "Will you make a documentary?" And he's the guy that really made me think about it. He's an Ishinomaki guy and a really nice guy. And when I started to actually film it, I didn't really know where to start. And so I started with him. I said, "Hey, Endo-san, you want me to make a documentary? Here I am. I'm going to make it. So let's sit down and talk." And it was in the middle of you know devastation, and, and, and things were just you know upside down. And we met in a really dark little, there was only one, one kind of restaurant bar that was open in the entire city. It was in an area that wasn't destroyed. Everything else was closed. We met there and, um, and talked for like four hours. And I took tons of notes and, um, and got some tips on who to talk to next. And then I started talking to those people. And every time I would go somewhere, I would go to an event, I would volunteer. Um, that was really important to me. So I'd be filming and um, what, it's different when you're volunteering, when you're first, when I was there the first couple of times and I wasn't filming, you know, you have this feeling there's, there's the people in front of you that, that are, are, you know, they've gone through so much, they haven't eaten for a while, and they're in these shelters, and you give them, especially in the very beginning, you give them really their first hot meal. And when you do that, and they say thank you, I mean, <laughs> you know, I can't explain it without crying, you know, it just makes you feel like, wow, you know, this is what life's all about. And, um, and so switching from that environment, there's a number of those stories, which you know, I, I don't want to keep you guys here all night, but there's a number of those kinds of stories. And, um, and so feeling that direct you know, sense of, of um, I guess, 
you know, fat, I don't know, it's a, I only think in Japanese now, Taseikan, you know, Taseikan, Jujitsukan, so we're going to translate for me. Um, achievement. What's that? Achievement. achievement. Achievement, yeah, kind of. I mean, it's fulfillment, I think is probably the best word. Fulfillment inside your heart, you know? That is different when you start filming, when you start shooting. So when you're filming people doing that and you're with a camera, you suddenly aren't really helping anymore. You don't really have that fulfillment anymore. And so it can be very frustrating. You're watching all these people really working hard to clean up this incredible mud and to feed people and to move provisions into places and work on these, getting these containers out of the ocean and all this stuff. And here you are with the camera and it's like, geez, I should be helping. And so that was what made it very hard for me. And so I would film for about an hour or two, and then I'd put down my camera, and then the camera bag, and then I'd help. And I'd do that for a couple hours. And then I'd pick up my camera again, back and forth doing that. And, it, and while I did that, I think subconsciously I started to really earn their trust. You know, like we, we were in it together. You know, we were, we were a team. And so, and so even though I was filming, and they knew I was doing that for the long run, I also didn't, rest ever and made sure that I was with them the whole time. And so by doing that, I would meet other people, meet other people, we would get to know each other and I would get to understand them and I would just keep filming them until afterwards I had an incredible um, group of people and these were just the ones I made it into the film. I mean, I have amazing people that didn't even get into the film because I only, you know, you're only making 90 minutes and it didn't work and so one day I'd like to put it all on the internet. but. Um, but that was really how I did it. So it was kind of like starting out and then meeting people and meeting people and kind of building, being, becoming part of the community. Sure. Question up there on the top? Uh, do you plan to go international for the movie? International. Um, yes. It, assuming, you know, this is because it's a voluntary effort, you know, I'm, I can only do so much, basically. I, I put the film out in Japan and now I've put it out here. Um, I kind of took around a little bit, you know, usually we would have a distribution company that then took it to AMC and did this sort of stuff. In this case, it's just me. Um, luckily, I've got amazing volunteers like Michelle and just so many people that have helped. Um, but we're not a company and, you know, we're not full time and we're just doing it out of our, out of our I'm kind of full time, huh? You're kind of full time. <laughs> but besides that, um, you know, everybody just pitches in what they can. So it's, it's not sustainable for us to keep doing this. And so really it comes down to this has to be a grassroots movement. So when uh, people in other countries come, like there's a guy in Singapore, he, um, he emailed me and he really wants to do a screening out there. And, and so I said, great, you know, let me understand what your screening is, you know, and I'll ship you um, Blu-ray or whatever you need and you'll arrange the screening. We just did that in London with the Japan Society. So um, I think we're talking, there's a, a group in Germany that's interested in doing a screening. So that's sort of, that's really the way it will go international. Um, I'll be in Hong Kong next week at the film art there and hopefully there'll be some people who want to do this but I found that with this movie and maybe a lot of movies nowadays the traditional quote unquote route of distribution doesn't work so coming up with a different route is really key in getting it to the people who want to see it and for me in this case it's about grassroots but the answer so the answer is yes and exactly when in which countries I don't know 